What up guys, welcome to my new Havoc Demon Hunter PvP guide. In this video I will be guiding you through an amazing Demon Hunter build, powerful and incredibly fun to play with. Both this build and my previous one are viable, but this is the one we will be transitioning into once we get our hands on this season's 4th piece tier set. Even without it, it still is about as powerful as the momentum build, so I encourage you to try it out, and if you enjoy it, then start using it now, there is no need to wait for the tier set to arrive, at which point today's build will be the far superior choice. If you have watched my previous build guide, feel free to use the timestamps below in order to jump right into the new build analysis, as you are already aware of the previous chapters and I only added a little bit more information. With that said, hope you enjoy. First let's take a look at our stat priority. Havok still follows the same pattern, mastery is by far our best secondary stat, followed by versatility, then critical strike chance and finally haste. Mastery boosts all your chaos damage by a massive amount and thanks to our any means necessary talent, all your magical damage will be amplified by this. Versatility boosts both our damage and defense, which usually makes it the most popular secondary stat for every class in the game when it comes to PvP combat. Critical strike chance is also pretty good, even though critical hits have been nerfed down to 150% damage, it still has great synergy with our Know Your Enemy talent. Haste will reduce your global cooldowns, which will allow you to react and chain skill combos much faster, it will also slightly reduce the cooldowns of some of your abilities. The choice between Critical Strike Chance and Haste as a fourth stat is entirely personal. It all comes down to what is more fun to you. If, like me, you enjoy a slightly slower but more unpredictable playstyle with big damage numbers popping up on your screen, then Crit is the way to go. In the other hand, if you enjoy a fluid playstyle without surprises but where you are in full control of your gameplay, then Haste is for you. As for gems, your best option is the Zen Naltharite, granting you a lot of mastery and a little bit of versatility as well. If you manage to find someone to craft you the main stat gem, then go for it, you will have a bit of an edge that way. Now to the enchants. You want to buy your 3 necklace sockets. Pay attention to this part, there are 3 levels of the same enchant, of which you will need to buy 3 of. Now notice that each socket requires an enchant of its bracket or higher. So if you go to the action house and the bronze level enchant is more expensive than the silver one, just buy 2 of the silver quality ones, as the first one you use will unlock your bronze bracket socket. As for the third slot, you will always have to buy the golden option. Then for the cloak we want either regenerative leash or homebound speed. The leash stat synergizes well with the demon hunter playstyle but it has been massively nerfed this season, so even though we don't need more mobility, going for speed might be the better choice for now. For the chest we want waking stats, on the bracers 200 leash or 200 speed depending on your preference, on the pants we want fierce armor kit, for the boots go with watcher's loam if you want a bit more defense or plain runner's breeze for mobility. On the rings go with the highest mastery enchant and finally for the weapons you want the agility proc on both. If you are an old school player you might find it odd to use the same enchant on both hands but in dragonflight weapon stat enchants stack with each other which means that you will indeed be proccing them at a singular rate, however the buff you get will be twice as strong. Another option that is currently quite powerful is the Shadow Flame Wreath, which periodically applies a dot effect on your target. This enchant is doing a lot of damage, you'd also want it on both your weapons, but I personally still recommend the Sophic Devotion, a frequent enough proc of almost 1900 agility for 15 seconds is something that even this new enchant will struggle to beat. Also knowing Blizzard, there is a high chance for the dot enchant to be nerfed soon, as I doubt that it was intended for PvP combat. Now let's take a look at the trinkets. This topic is highly dependent on your playstyle, so take this as my personal opinion and not as the absolute way to go for everyone. 
For crowd control removal, you have two options. If you are playing with a pre-made arena team, able to communicate with your healer, then medallion is the way to go, as you will be carefully choosing when it is worth using. However, if you are playing solo shuffle or without comms, then I highly advise you to use the sigil. This trinket has half the cooldown of the medallion and goes off immediately on any crowd control with a duration of 5 seconds or more. This means that it will not spend the trinket to remove, let's say, a 4 second root or a 3 second polymorph. It will also auto remove your crowd control, so your healer won't be spending his dispel on you at the same time, something that will happen a lot if you run medallion on solo shuffle. I absolutely love this trinket, it is amazing, I cannot understand how pretty much no one else uses it. However, if you are going against a rogue, it might be a good idea to swap into your medallion, because because if the rogue is aware, he will simply take your trinket out with a sap at the start of the match. As for the second trinket choice, the emblem is the way to go. Flat agility is always reliable and an extra 2 minute defensive is a major advantage in today's heavy burst meta. The other 2 damage options can be taken, but I personally don't recommend it as a 1 minute cooldown does not align with our burst window and please do not wait 20 seconds on your entire burst every time just for the sake of the trinket. That will result in way less damage output than you would otherwise be doing with the defensive emblem option. The proc trinket is a better pick however, sometimes I play with it myself, but it is quite unreliable and haste just just doesn't drive my boat. Now finally, let's take a look at our build. As you can see, the momentum path is gone, so Felrush is back to being a mobility only focused button. Without all these left side damage amplifiers, you will notice that Soul Rand and everything else will be doing less damage. But that is where I Beam comes in for the rescue, making up for all that damage. And, if you have your hands on your 4th piece tier set bonus already, doing way more damage than the momentum path would otherwise, turning this build into the far superior choice. By now, if you watch my videos, you will be wondering why, after so many guides telling you to cancel your iBeam, I am now encouraging you to do the exact opposite. Well, Blizzard has completely changed the way iBeam works in PvP, we no longer get chaos locked after getting into interrupted halfway through iBeam. This means that you can safely hard channel it with no fear of disrupting your burst window. But keep in mind that an interrupt will still stop your iBeam, it just won't lock your other abilities. So you will need to be a bit careful still choosing when you cast it, as it is now one of our main sources of damage. Don't worry too much though, as Blind Fury has also been reworked and now your iBeam channels much faster. So a a simple fell rush out of melee range or a vengeful retreat into high beam should be enough to protect it in most scenarios. High beam damage will be amplified by the following talents: Serrated Glaive, Looks Can Kill, Blind Fury, and Isolated Prey. Serrated Glaive now also increases your Chaos Strike damage and does not get consumed. It stays on your target for the entire duration. This is a nice little buff, but nothing too crazy. Looks Can Kill is a must have, don't ever think about not taking it, this makes iBeam a very powerful and scary ability, benefiting fully from the Know Your Enemy bonus critical strike damage. Isolated Prey is a talent that I enjoy a lot, however in 3v3 arena it is tricky to take advantage of it against most comps, especially if there are pets involved, but still, 30% tie beam damage is massive, resource generation is what our set bonus is all about, and a more powerful stun on the healer to complete that crowd control chain is not too shabby either. This talent will take some getting used to, you will have to learn how to aim all 3 of these abilities in order to hit only one target. It will be often impossible, but don't worry about it, as you get used to it, when the opportunity rises, you will start being able to identify when you can use this to its full potential. Our Soul Rand now does a lot more single target damage to the first enemy hit, 
having been buffed from 20 to 60%. This is amazing, Demon Hunter was doing good damage, but not being able to pressure the kill target enough, as its damage was too spread out. This still holds true, but with this change we have taken a step in the right direction for sure. And by playing around high beam powerful damage bursts, we should be way scarier to the kill target now than we were before. Soul Rand is the bread and butter of this build, your troglave ability will take priority over Chaos Strike, but this rule has two exceptions. During your demonic, Chaos Strike takes priority and if your target is really low on HP, within a Chaos Strike critical hit of range from going down, then you should use it instead of Glaive Throw, as its damage is instantaneous. In any other situation, troglave is the way to go and make sure you always have one charge recharging, as anytime you have two charges your damage potential is being heavily reduced. Mortal Dance is a PvP must have, incredibly powerful talent, don't even think about not picking this, Demon Hunter is not viable without it. This is one of the reasons Demon Hunter is still strong despite all the nerfs, the ability to apply an AoE healing reduction effect to the entire enemy team every time you press an 8 second cooldown ability is just amazing. Essence Break has been nerfed countless times, but still it is what makes our burst window possible. So of course take it and use it right after I beam, follow it up with Death Dance and a couple annihilations in order to scare the living hell out of your enemy. Father to the Flame is a must have, you need that self healing and that 20% damage buff is absolutely necessary. Also when running the new reworked Blood Moon PvP talent, you can actually dispel the demon in order to force it into dropping his soul while still alive. You can use that 20% damage buff, let the demon be for 15 seconds and then when it is about to expire, execute it and claim its soul once again, effectively doubling the duration of your 20% damage buff. Also, leaving the demon alive for 15 seconds can be pretty good against some comps, since getting damaged by the demon will break you out of enemy crowd control cast on you. Burning Wound is amazing, it allows your Immolation Aura to do a lot of AoE damage and more importantly gives us another strong and easy to apply dot effect that lasts for 15 seconds. Amazing talent, so much value here, for instance keeping stealthy classes out of stealth. Always take Demon Blades, there is no universe where insatiable hunger is an option. Why would anyone want to spam a very unrewarding ability and be stuck within global cooldowns from doing so? That option just breaks the entire class, completely disregard it, I don't even know why Blizzard still has it there. So now you have two talent points that you can freely move around as you please. Let's take a look at all the viable options you have to spend them. You can get Furious Gaze for that extra 10% haste during your burst window, but keep in mind that you will only get this buff if your channel completely finishes, and then grabbing the recently buffed Inner Demon. I absolutely love this talent, it has such a fun and engaging animation, it truly is something I enjoy playing with and I am very happy that we are now able to do so. This is currently hitting for quite a good amount, I have seen 80k plus critical strikes, which is pretty good. Also, it makes your burst way scarier and unpredictable, however it does miss quite often, especially when your target is on the move. Another way you can spend this is by grabbing improved Chaos Strike, which doesn't really help all that much, but allows us to get demonic appetite. Remember the newly reworked PvP talent we talked about? This has perfect synergy with it, allowing you to gain 30 fury from every soul fragment you consume, including the ones generated by your consumed magic and your father to the flame demon souls. This will give you a lot of resource generation, which as we have seen is perfect for this season and the extra healing is always appreciated. 
Another path you can take is to use either the Demonic Appetite Point or the Serrated Glaive one on Netherwalk. I have talked a lot about this ability on past guides, it really isn't as powerful as it seems, you are essentially useless to your team while immune, and pay attention to the fact that it only immunes damage. You cannot use it to break out of crowd control for example, which means that you will still get killed on that stun lock the most common way you will die in the arena. Still, I like to use it to prevent incoming damage and reposition, and the final path you can choose is to replace the second point into Serrated Glaive as it is a very good damage modifier, and use the last point on either Burning Hatred for even more fury generation or on Relentless Onslaught. This talent gives you the element of surprise, a 10% chance to strike twice with Chaos Strike, can stress out the enemy healer in the right situation, or even win you the game right there and then, especially when it occurs during your demon form. But for now, since Inner Demon is a possibility, I highly encourage you to give it a try, it might not be the min-maxed best option, but it is very much viable, and most importantly, it is fun. And after all, isn't that what video games are for? Now let's take a look at our class talent tree. There are a few points you can mess with here as well. One way to use them is by getting Unrestrained Fury, which is just a quality of life nice to have, since you will be generating quite a lot of fury and always capping it every time you use Zybeam. It is not necessary however, and there might be better options depending on your playstyle. So let's take a look at those. Swallowed Anger has amazing synergy with his build, it complements your PvP talent Blood Moon, and if you are specced into Demonic Appetite, you will now be generating 50 Fury every time you dispel someone. A very good option, I will likely be running it myself. Another way you can go is to get Will of the Illidari, increasing your HP by quite a nice amount. This is pretty good since Demon Hunter has become a good kill target, and every little bit of extra survivability is more than welcome. I have been stubborn about using Sigils in the past, but guys, Sigil of Misery has won me so many matches, it does take a little bit getting used to due to the built-in activation delay, but don't worry, you will get the hang of it in no time. Demon Hunter has very good instant cast crowd control, and the ability to extend it with this sigil is just too powerful to pass on, so make sure to take the 30 second reduced cooldown with it. Also take precise sigil so that it will always be used on your target's location. Don't worry, your focus cast sigil of misery macros will still work as intended. Sigil of Flame is just a nice button to get for one talent point, this is basically what you press when you need fury and can't get it in any other way. Also make sure to use this pre-actively, before engaging each fight, and while kiting so that you charge into the fray with some additional fury in order to get your damage going. I advise you to use this macro, this will make your Sigil of Flame always cast on your current location, negating the effect of precise sigils. The reason for that is because this gives you more control over the area you are using it at. You cannot choose your enemy's location, but you can choose your own, and the last thing you want is to break your teammate's crowd control by mistake with this. Also, leaving this ability on the ground behind you is a pretty effective way to catch stealthy classes off guard. Always pick Collective Anguish, I cannot believe that I still see some Demon Hunters not taking this. It has good damage, a lot of healing especially if you hit a bunch of pets with it, and the best part is, it does not stop even if your eye beam gets interrupted. I recommend you to use Long Night, this will extend your darkness effect by 3 seconds. Darkness is a very powerful team-wide defensive, even if you have to get out of it in order to get back in the fight, remember that your healer and your DPS teammates will still be able to make use of it. And having your healer or ranged DPS protected for an additional 3 seconds can and often will save you the game. In Solo Shuffle you should use a macro like this in order to let your team know when and where you pop darkness. It will be a bit spammy for them, I know, but it will also win you a lot of games. Now let's take a look at the PvP talents. 
always take chaotic imprint with this build, your troglev will always benefit from whichever magic damage comes out of this, thanks to our any means necessary talent. And depending on your team, you might also be increasing the damage of a teammate. Let's say it comes out as the fire school of magic, your fire mage teammate will be a very happy man for about 20 seconds. The next two options are up to you, there are a few viable choices and all of them have their place in the current meta. Blood Moon, as we have already talked about, is an amazing PvP talent, it provides so much utility, healing, resource generation depending on how you spent those last couple points, and if you do the demon dispel trick we talked about, about, then it will also massively increase your damage. I expect to see a lot of this talent throughout this season. Another PvP talent that has been buffed is Rain from Above. It now does significant damage, during the first week of the season it was hitting for upwards of 90,000 damage, which was very powerful, but it has now been nerfed back from 10 to 8% total HP damage. And as such, I no longer recommend it as much. It is still good in the right situation, but you have to be very careful about when and where you use it. Remember that you will be stuck in the air, unable to LOS the enemy team or take any other action for quite a long time. You don't want to force your healer out of cover, placing him in a bad position just to keep you alive up there, while a warlock is chaos bolting the life out of you. That will simply lose you the match right there and then. A good use for this is to get out of movement impairing effects, but even then you will also be rooting yourself in place, so yes, you will be doing pretty good damage with a time you would otherwise be sitting in a frost nova, but still the previous cons I explained are very much present. This talent still remains a viable choice, but you must be very careful with how you use it. Next up we have Glimpse, a very popular and powerful choice. Just keep in mind that the more experience you have with Havok Demon Hunter, the more impactful this talent will become. This used to be a 75% damage reduction, it's ok it got nerfed, because damage reduction isn't even the reason we use it. I have made a tips and tricks video featuring some very useful interactions with this, make sure to take a look at it, and I will be making another more complete one in the near future, with even more tips and tricks. A very good use for this is to break out of this arm. Yes, you can actually do that. Vengeful retreating while you have the glimpse pvp talent will immediately remove any disarm effect you have on yourself. This kind of knowledge is precious and extremely necessary in order to succeed with this class. Another very good choice is reverse magic. You can remove all harmful magical effects from yourself and from your nearby teammates with this every minute. This is pretty much an AoE medallion, however keep in mind that you cannot use it while under a disabling effect, and that some crowd control is not considered magical. Otherwise free your healer of crowd control, break yourself and your team out of that frost nova, or even reflect a priest mind game's ability. Mind gaming a mind game is one of my favorite usages for this talent. It is just so fun to surprise priests with this. As for honorable mentions, we have Detainment and Unending Hatred. Detainment is very useful if you see that a solo shuffle teammate is breaking your imprison. If you notice that, just pop this talent up on the next match you have to play with him. Also, this effectively makes your imprison an instant cast cyclone, so you can use this to prevent healing on an enemy, use that time to set up proper crowd control on the enemy healer, and as soon as imprison ends, finish off the guy and win the match right there. An ending hatred might sound like a weird choice, nobody uses it, but since Demon Hunter has become a viable kill target in the arena, I do believe that this is pretty good, especially if you take in account this season's tier set bonus that truly shines with high fury generation. When it comes to other macros, a must have is the instant metamorphosis on cursor location. This macro will allow you to react very fast and make use of your metamorphosis immunity window to turn the battle in your favor. Yes, you are completely immune during the animation and you can use that to completely avoid big damage enemy abilities such as the hunt, avoid incoming crowd control or to get out of lockdown abilities. 
Also, make sure that you are dispelling as often as possible with your consumed magic ability. Removing, for example, a blessing of protection can and often will win you the game. And just like that, you are now a master demon hunter. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't yet, and as always, I will see you in the arena.